Hi everyone and welcome back to The Colour Cave where we like to play with art stuff. My name is Gem and I'd like to welcome you back to another day of Cavemas. Around this time of year I do like to dabble in some crafty pursuits. So today we are going to attempt to make some decorations for the tree. Last year's video I did a similar thing, I used resin. This time I've picked up some supplies from Arteza and we're going to give them a little bit of a road test and just generally enjoy ourselves and make a mess. Why not? So let's get to top down view and we can get going. So this was a bit of an impulse purchase and it's not something I'm normally guilty of but I just knew that they would come in handy at some point and this is the Arteza pre-sanded wood rounds. I haven't really looked at them, there's 45 wood slices. They do come in two different sizes and I've got the smaller ones because I think we're going to make some tree decorations with them. Now last year I did do a resin video and we made these um, these little scatter pieces just to go in with my, my holly. So I figured it might be nice to try something different. Now this appeals to me, I like natural materials and I always have a real tree and I love the smell of a real tree so I thought these might be quite fitting. So I'm quite interested to see what the deal is. They're a lot bigger than I thought they would be. But what interested me was these ones have pre-drilled holes in them. The bigger ones don't. So I imagine you could use the bigger ones for things like a coasters maybe. Oh, they smell amazing as well. Okay. Nice sort of jute string. That's really cool. I did, I've already got some. I've got like a whole roll, but that's cool. Okay, so the first thing is they're not a uniform size. They are made of natural wood, so they're not going to be. And they've got this um, nice sort of bark finish. So they're, they're in a size range. So between six and seven centimeters in diameter. So that's roughly two and a half, between two and a half and three inches, give or take, for those of you who prefer imperial measurements. So let's just have a look at the selection here. I feel that some of these are really, would be too big for decorations. I like the fact that they're not all uniform, though some of them have got a much smoother um, sort of surround, you know, the bark part, whereas some are really jaggy like this. Jaggy, that's <laughs> a really good Scottish word for you. Uh, jaggy, you know, like, jaggy, spiny, to touch, that's jaggy. Zigzaggy, jaggy, yeah, okay, you get the picture. Um, yeah, so there's some that are quite refined. So I'm quite liking this. I'm liking the little diddly ones though, but I like the really big ones too. That's a really good size. That would make quite a nice uh, decoration. You can do this on both sides. They are smoothed right down. So what I thought we could do today was get out the old Posca pens because that'll be great on this surface. I've also got a selection of glitter as well um, so that we can make them a little bit spangly. Oh my goodness. A little bit spangly dangly. So today is one of those days where I'm going to get covered in glitter and I'm going to be finding it on myself and in the cave for about three weeks. But that's okay because it's Cape Miss. So the first thing I want to do is grab a pencil and I just want to see what it's like to draw on these. We could start with a really simple design and let's just see. Okay, absolutely no problem whatsoever. Like nothing, no problem. So that's good. That means we can sketch out some ideas. So the type of thing that I was thinking about was to maybe do like a winter scene, like a snow scene. My star here is incredibly wonky though. <laughs> Just to do a wee bit of fixing here. Hmm. So the good thing about using Posca pens for this, I wonder if I can erase on this as well. Let's just test this out. We might as well, see as we're here. If we go with the grain of the wood, yep, absolutely fine. Yeah, so the reason that I thought pes pe Pesca pens, oh goodness me, the reason I thought Posca pens would be a good idea is because they are opaque and that means that we can do things in layers and really get some nice vibrant and fun colour. So in terms of the Posca pens, I have a, quite a varied selection and varied nib sizes as well. I do have some glittery ones. I don't know if you can see the cap on that or not, but we've got glittery ones. And in the midst somewhere here, I do have gold and silver. Ah, oh, there's a gold one. Find a gold one. The other thing I've got as well that I would really, really like to use is this Molotov um, liquid chrome pen because it is super, super shiny. 
super shiny. So we might even try that. But for the background initially on this one, I think I would quite like to have a dark blue background. So, oh. I'll just want to see how these go down. I call this colour elephant grey. And that's going down like super easy. Like super easy. So I'm hoping that this is going to be really good to fill in. And this particular nib size that I'm using is the 5M. So it's like this is like a, a sort of chunkier monkey as it were. And I think I'll just take this out to the, where the bark line is. Because I quite like that bark, uh, you know, as a feature. Like it's almost like a little picture frame around it. Now they have been sanded quite smooth. But I think in interests of maintaining the integrity of the nib of your Poscas or whatever paint pens you would want to use I would say go in the direction of the grain because that's going to be far less abrasive because what happens with these nibs eventually is that they start to fray and then they split it's a bit like if you've got a really dry paintbrush when you're painting it gives that sort of you know effect which can be nice on its own but it's not really something you want happening to all your your pens and I'm not having to press at all. So let's try with the, the liquid chrome just to see what happens here. Now the the paint is drying really quickly and that's just because the wood's like sucking it up. And the same thing with this pen as well, you don't necessarily want to go daft. I think this is one of these things as well, this would be a really nice thing to do with your kids because it's something that can be done with most age groups as well. So even if you've got, you know, teeny tiny little children you can still let them you know dump the dump glitter and things on them and I just think it's a really nice family activity uh, that you can you know that everyone can take part in and it's something that's going to give you some memories because if you're going to hang these decorations on your your tree or wherever it is you hang your winter decorations year after year you know it's something that's uh, going to be remembered you could do one every year you know just do one each every year and then before you know where you are, you'll have a tree, tree full of decorations. Okay, that's quite subtle. So I was thinking maybe it's snowing in the background. Now, I could be really ambitious here. Got a glue stick pen here, and I've got some Arteza glitter. So I'm thinking to myself, I wonder if... Number one, is this going to take the take the silver paint off a little bit but if I just go all the way around here I may live to regret this decision it's sealed for your protection really oh. <laughs> okay <laughs> and of course you know I'm just gonna press that in <laughs> just to make sure some of it sticks that's all I think I'm a like a closet glitter lover okay so if I just uh, Move this out of the way. Oh, so pretty. Oh, that's lovely. That's really nice. Okay, uh, in order to seal these, because that's something that I would want to do, I had ordered some Mod Podge, but it hasn't arrived, which is slightly disappointing. So I will be taking the time to, to seal these off before I hang them on the tree. So we'll let that settle for a wee while because I would like to do the other side as well. And I am putting the lid back on this before something crazy happens. See now the problem with this is for the remaining eight days of cave mist, you're gonna see glitter in every video. I will wipe the table down properly later I think. That's be that'll be fine. Okay for the next one I would like to try a little snow scene and I think what I'll do is I'll use one of the bigger ones that's got kind of smooth or surface on it. Now I'm just wondering if you could actually peel the bark off of this. There was one that had a chunk of bark missing out the side of it, one of the bigger ones. I'm just wondering if you, yeah look you could, you could actually peel that off. There we go. Okay so we've got a, a much smoother edge around the outside. If I'm thinking about drawing a, like a winter scene I've got to bear in mind that that hole is there. So let's see, We get let's get a horizon line and I maybe put it down a wee bit lower actually. I was going to put it right through the centre there. Right, draw my horizon line in. Maybe we could have some snowy mountains. That would be cool. And then we could have like a little river flowing down here. Or it won't be flowing because it's frozen. And uh, then we could have the moon. 
and we could have some pine trees or something down here. Maybe just one or two. You don't want to make these too complicated unless you're feeling really ambitious, which some of you may well be. Okay, so that's quite simple but effective. So let's start with the sky. So obviously because we've got no bark, I'm going to take this right to the edge. I wonder if I've got a 5M. That's the 3M, so that's like a middle size point. So even if your uh, even if your drawing skills aren't that great, you can create fairly fairly simple images that are still going to look good. Because bearing in mind, you're not going to have like a massive amount of detail in these because they're not that big. I actually can't see my <laughs> can't see my pencil lines. Dang damn it! Oh, there it is. There. I should really draw around all all of this. There we go. And then there's the last little hump there. Okay, I've got my moon here. So when I'm going round, because I'm using the really thick pen, when I'm going round these details, I'm, I'm drawing round the outside of the pencil line. So it makes the shape look a much, much, much bigger, but it's just because it's got a big thick nib. If I was using the smaller one, if I was using the 3M, I would be drawing more accurate, accurately on the actual pencil lines. But you've just got, you know, you've got to take that into account because if you go directly over the pencil lines when you're using a nib this thick, your the actual image will end up a lot smaller. But see, it's just really for guidance because I'm able to layer these up. But with things like the moon, I like to get like a rough shape because that's one of those things that I draw and sometimes it doesn't always turn out right. So I would rather just have that pencil line there as a guide. And there's no reason and nothing to stop you just going straight in with Posca. Like you don't actually have to do a sketch. If you're a more experienced or seasoned artist, I'm sure you'd be quite comfortable doing that. This is the first time I've worked with these though, so... I think even after one or two though, I think I could probably go in freehand now without any... without any real issues if I'm honest, but... It's just nice to get an idea in your head sometimes. <laughs> I like this already and I've only put the black in. <laughs> okay, so I'm kind of looking for... like a... maybe like a light blue. Now I don't know if I want this one or this one. Or this one because these are all different i'm gonna have to test these out on my glittery bit of paper to decide oh i think i might have to use that one <laughs> i'll make that one the best that's quite vibrant and it's sparkly mm, that's too blue okay right definitely not those ones i could use the sparkly one just for fun <laughs> no i think it's going to be the pale blue first of all i'll put my snow in down here and this looks like it may need another layer so to use the 3M here, and it's just to put in this sort of windy part of the frozen river. So that's just to help me, that's like a wee guideline. So it's obvious we're going to need more than one layer here, because it, it will just soak into the wood. It's paint after all. Okay, we'll let that dry for a little bit. But this is a 1M, so this is like a teeny, teeny tiny nib. And again, I'm just going to turn this round so that I can manoeuvre in the gaps. And it's really nice, actually, see the precision I can get with this little 1M. I, I love these little Posca markers. Oh, yeah, a little moon. Okay, I'm going to put the water in first. So I'm going to use the sparkly blue for the water, because I think that'll look nice. Oh, yeah, <laughs> this is what I'm talking about. I mean, like, I'm not adverse to a bit of sparkle, but I'm just not, like, you know how you get people that just absolutely love glitter on everything? I'm really not that person, but this is nice. Oh, so good. So I can go back over my white now. It is, oh, it has dried a wee bit. So I might need to build up a couple of layers of this. Yeah, that looks better. I don't, it doesn't need to be completely covered. I don't mind a little bit of the wood showing through, but um, I just felt that that wasn't enough. That, just that one layer. It's funny, I've had Posca markers for a long time and they are, they're not something I use like all the time or anything, but I really enjoy them and they're always loads of fun. And uh, I'm gonna use the smaller one to go back over my moon and I'm gonna pop a little bit of snow on top of my mountains. And again, I'll probably need a couple of layers here, but that's okay. Okay, so down here, I'm gonna put some trees in. And what I thought was, I can... I was going to do them in black, but I thought, no, do you know what? That's not fun. Well, it is fun, but it's more, more fun if we use green, because in case you all didn't know, I love a bit of green. Yeah, so not doing anything crazy. I just wanted to keep some simple shapes. 
And again, I can go back to my white and just go over my snow here, make it stand out a wee bit more. And we can stick some stars or maybe maybe snow, I don't know. Mm -hmm. suppose if we bring it down in front of our mountains, then <laughs> we'll know that it's snow. And it's really disappearing on the black, so we may have to go over these a couple of times, but that's okay too. Ah, oh, so cute. So I'm going to come back to this star one now as you can see my glitter settled down a little bit and it's looking it's looking quite cute indeed so I'm just going to flip over and do the other side now the nice thing about doing this is they don't have to be perfectly symmetrical because you can't see both sides at the same time so I am going to use that to my full advantage but I'm going to turn this scrap of paper now rather than the actual uh, rather than the actual ornament itself because I've got that glitter on the other side and until I've sealed it I don't want it knocking off everywhere. Made my star a little bit wonky, oh dear. Okay, I've realised that my star is really really wonky but I've also realised that I can fix it fairly easily actually um, with the, the silver pen. Actually not a huge issue at all. We will need to make sure that that's absolutely dry before we go in with the silver so I'm just gonna again just let that do its thing. I'm going to start on the back of this one as well so you can see my little sparkly rivers looking actually looking quite cute. While I was doing that as well I had another idea um, for these if you were going to do it in like a family setting and what you could do is especially if you've got kids you could put their initial on one side for them so everybody had their own one and then on the opposite side you could get them to decorate it with whatever you want and that way you know it's a bit more personalised. Just an idea. I don't have any children so um, I do try and think about these things though. <laughs> right, okay, so <laughs> let's see how good my memory is. I'm gonna see if I can like sort of recreate this without, I need to make sure it's level though. That wasn't, wasn't a bad guess actually. Okay, so that was my horizon line. We could maybe make the, 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 the mountains, the, like a mirror image on this side, something like that. And then that would mean that my river's gonna come out this way. Obviously it's not gonna be a symmetrical river. Can't get my wiggly lines to do the same thing twice. Put my moon in again. Right, black marker first, let's go. I don't think that's an identical mountain range to my last one. I don't think it's dissimilar. I think we're gonna have to start having a separate Christmas tree in the cave, just so that we can hang up our decorations that we're gonna make every year. <laughs> that's not such a stupid idea, actually. Okay, I think I kinda like that idea. First layer down, and I can do my first layer of white as well because this is going to take me a few layers. Okay, so while we're letting that dry, we'll go back to our star, or our, our lack of star as the case may be. So I'm going to go again with my pencil. Better. <laughs> Not perfect, but for an eyeball and freehand, better. So I'm just going to fill all this in again like I did with the other one. The other one, the one on the other side, Gem, it's not the other one, it's the other side. Da, 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 da. And I get to use the shiny one again. <laughs> I'm having a bit too much fun here. This is great fun. Wee. Again, just switching back over, I let that dry properly so that I don't have any mistakes. And go around the outside of this really quickly. Oh maybe a wee bit too quick there and then grab this glitter and <laughs> go for it yeah really let's just uh, do what we did last time give it a wee pat it's actually quite nice glitter premium glitter I didn't think there was any other kind of glitter other than glittery glitter but goes to show you what I know there seems to be a lot stuck to the middle did that happen on that side a little bit okay that's okay I suppose Chap. Get off my hands. Oh. Uh, I'm one-sided with my light. I don't know whether you've noticed or not, but I've normally got another light on over there and I've had to unplug it for uh, old house disastrous reasons. So I'm kind of like a bit lopsided tonight. Um, not much I can do about it though, but it doesn't really matter. This string feels lovely compared to mine. Mine feels really cheap and nasty. This feels nice. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so just the, the sort of finishing touch. The other thing I would probably use as well is a bit of ribbon rather than this string, but in the interests of using what came in the box. 
I don't know how long I want to make my stringy thingy though. I don't want to make it that long. I'm pretty sure I said this last year as well. For those of you that are quite crafty, um, you'll be able to eyeball stuff like this and know the exact length. And if I'd paid any attention to what I did last year, I probably would too. I was going to loop this over and through. So I'm not really... And then I can pull that tight. And then just tie myself a, a little knot in the top here. I can manage that. Oh, okay. So we've got one done. Oh, just make sure that knot's nice and tight. And I, you know, if see for something so simple, I actually think that's really cute. And I really like rustic stuff. Obviously, I live on a farm, so rustic's kind of a thing. <laughs> right, I need to um oh right, I'll put this out of the way just now. Get rid of the glitter again, and we'll finish off my my little mountain scene as well it's just dawned on me as well that little woo the jack russell um she navigates her way mostly by nose now because she's deaf and her her eyesight isn't very good either and i know for a fact she's gonna have glitter all over her nose for about three days as well <laughs> right back to what we were doing here so big big chunky one white white one first and i'll just get another layer down over here i think two layers is doing it that's enough to be on with and with the smaller nib one, I'm just going to cap off my, my mountains. There we go. Just get it nice and vibrant. Looking good. And I can stick in my trees. I was considering um, adding some white in on the trees because obviously you would think that the snow would fall on the branches. But I think just with the size of what we're doing, I think it would just end up looking... A little bit messy so I'm going to skip that step because at the end of the day we want this to be fun and simple you know it doesn't have to be a complete and utter masterpiece I think I want to make this tree bigger though feels inferior next to his friend there okay so just had to add a bit of pizzazz to this I was going to try and find some glitter that matches the uh, what we've done in the this sort of frozen over river and there's two kind of catching my eye here there's turquoise and there's like a holographic turquoise and uh, I'm thinking that they might be quite close to what I'm looking for. This might be a little bit brave. Oh, look at this. Oh, it's so glittery. <laughs> I thought if I dumped a little bit of this down on the paper and what I could do is, oh, that's gone everywhere already. Just a section at a time, I could cover this in glue and then roll it in the the glitter. Yeah, look at that, that's insane. So I'll just keep going here. I'm making sure I'm getting a really good covering of this glue. Now this is, uh, it's actually got a slight tint to it, this glue, which is kind of helpful right now. Oh, this is working beautifully. <laughs> so shiny. Oh, it's amazing. Simple things. These remind me of uh, biscuits I used to make years ago. Uh, many, many moons ago, I was a, a chef and I, a qualified chef at that and worked out in industry. And I used to make these biscuits that had like, um, like an almond coating on them just around the outside. And this is pretty much what I used to do. Obviously, I didn't have to put glue on them. <laughs> Better put the lid back on this before something drastic happens as well. And we'll get another bit of string. I think the last bit was a wee bit short. Now I'll do the same with this one as well. When my Mod Podge arrives, I will try and seal all that glitter in because obviously over time it'll just knock off and I'll end up with that with a, a bald ornament again, which that wouldn't be too cool. So nothing that a little bit of Mod Podge won't keep in place. So there we have it everyone, a nice simple crafty day in the cave and something that can be done with all of your family as well. So I hope you've enjoyed this today. I've uh, lots of little ideas going round in my head for these <laughs> these other bits of wood now. I've had really good fun today. As I say, if I had more time, I'd probably do more of these just for just for my own satisfaction. And uh, I will see you back in the cave tomorrow for another day of cave miss. So have a nice relaxing day, everyone, and bye for now.